So the tour of medieval York, not particularly strenuous, it's sort of a leisurely day out and sort of putting all the York churches together. Why are they important? What is the history? And we go from the sort of lowliest parish church right up to the great minster and everything in between. We see the lay aspects of Christianity and the cathedral, as well as the parish priest, as well as the secular canons that are running the minster, and all the sort of interesting tidbits and how history itself of England and of the birth of Christianity fits in between. So it's sort of why a church is important, but also the history too. We are visiting every, pretty much every aspect of the religious history of York. Virtually, we are seeing, as I say, your everyday parish church, but some of your most interesting, not only in York, but in England, we see some great stained glass, for example, in All Saints North Street. We also see the evidence of a former hermit who lived there, someone who essentially never came out of the church. We then move on to monasteries and we go to St Mary's Abbey, which, and they later founded um, Fountains Abbey, just up, not too far down the road, half an hour or so away. And we see the Abbot's House, which is now known as King's Manor, which was also important during the Reformation, as it housed the Council of the North. And then we go on and we move to the Minster as well great hub of northern Christianity where we have we see St William of York, we see parts of the shrine and his original tomb, we see some of the greatest set or series of medieval stained glass that still exists in the entirety of Europe, and one of the greatest and largest windows with the Great East Window which depicts the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse which essentially shows us Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of the world, so extremely important bit of stained glass. And then we move on to bed and chapel is in there, which was the vicar's choral, who were sort of lay servants because in the Middle Ages you had your canons running the cathedral and they were getting just so busy that they couldn't come and sing the daily services, so they got servants in to do it for them and that's who the vicar's choral are. And then again, move on to even more of the fantastic Gothic architecture which York's parish churches are so well known for. 